It doesn't happen all the time. It's not something you want to risk. And it looks but ugly to have your corn laying like this producing corn. We all want to look at corn that looks like this, right? So here's what I'm going to do to remedy that. Well, folks, it is hard to believe how fast this corn has grown. This is Ambrosia Sweet Corn from Haas Tools, and it is doing amazing. Dark, dark green. It's got plenty of water. It's got plenty of fertilizer. It's in these uh, raised beds, what I call my raised beds here, uh, which are just a series of tubs with the bottoms cut out of them. I use as raised beds. Onions over here, just about to start falling over and get pulled. But today we're talking about corn. Now, what does this corn need now? I've already done all the fertilizing I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a shot of micro boost today, but something is endangering this corn. If we get some high winds, this corn could fall over. Happens all the time. It's happened to me. It's probably happened to you. Now, can it devastate your corn? You bet you it can. It can break it off at the stalk. It can lay it down to where it just doesn't recover. But by and large, sometimes, the corn will lay down and then we'll start growing back up a little bit and we'll make ears on a stalk of corn that is pretty much parallel to the ground. It doesn't happen all the time. It's not something you want to risk. And it looks but ugly to have your corn laying like this producing corn. We all want to look at corn that looks like this, right? So here's what I'm going to do to remedy that, to prop it up to keep it from falling over. Done it several years in the past, works great. I'm gonna show you how to do it now. So what I plan on doing is coming through here and running some string down the side of it. One, maybe two, maybe two levels of string, almost like you would do when you're tying tomatoes. On the end here, I will drive two T-posts and then I'll run my, uh, I'll run my string just regular baling twine, I keep that around with a knife on it to cut. This is a 20,000 feet, 110 pound knot strength, just baler twine. So really I need more than just the two T-posts here on either end. This is a 50 foot row and it could probably use some supports uh, down the row too. So I've got some 3 8 rebar and we're gonna try to fix this corn where it does not fall over and look but ugly. Nobody wants but ugly corn, all right? Nobody. So let's get started. I'll set up the camera. Let's drive a few T-posts. One of my favorite activities. Not really. The tool of choice for driving rebar is not a T-post driver, just a good mallet. So this is halfway down. I'm just going to drive it right there. And now we just start running string. Again, this stuff is cheap. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it's pretty doggone cheap. I'm going to start pretty high. I don't know whether I'm going to do two rows of this or not. You would have to decide whether or not yours is more at risk. Obviously, if your plants were uh, shorter and you had uh, concern for them, then you would start off uh, with a lower wire, a lower string, and maybe work up from there. But mine are already so tall, I just don't think a lower string is necessary. So we're just gonna come down. We're not gonna weave like a Florida weave, in and out, in and out. We're just gonna put it on the outside of the plants. Now when I get down here, I'm going to stretch it tight and I'm going to wrap it around this rebar several times. One good thing about rebar, one reason I like it for stringing things up is that when you wrap something around it two or three times, you really don't have to tie a knot. It'll, it'll hold. The rebar is so rusty and kind of abrasive that it will hold. Now I'm still going to, as I'm going this way I'm still gonna keep it tight so it doesn't slip and I don't get slack in it when I get down here I'm gonna try to get under some of these leaves don't think it's I'm trying to see about 
where I've got it tied about right there wrap it around two or three times just so it won't slip as I go around the other side and then go around this next post here I'm over here go around this post on the other side pull it tight wrap it around about three or four times and now I'm starting to head down back toward the camera pulling it tight keeping it tight all the way till I get to my rebar back toward the camera I hope this is making sense and I'll show you the whole picture in just a second get my knife out I always keep a knife with the roll because you just never know all right wrap that around a couple of times when I tie I always like to tie at least two knots if not three because this stuff is it's polypropylene and the knots don't the knots don't grab they will slip a little bit if you tie it two or three times they won't so this is the tie it goes all the way down and this should keep the corn from falling over now what I might do if I see um, some wind coming in the forecast uh, I may go ahead and uh, come up about 12 inches from there and tie another string on it I don't I don't know that I will there's there's always that possibility because I'm starting to tassel out just beginning to see some tassels I've only seen one or two but uh, see how that's just should keep that corn from blowing over this way from coming this way uh, but look at that corn look how pretty and dark green and that's what you want you want your corn dark dark green uh, that shows it's getting plenty of fertilizer the fact that the leaves uh, aren't curled up uh, they're, they're laying kind of flat that shows that it's getting plenty of water now I mentioned that a raised bed or this particular raised bed for sure is more susceptible to corn falling over why is that well if you look down here you see what are called stabilizer roots or brace roots uh, I've heard them called two or three different things and it's basically roots that come up from the uh, from an inch or two above the plant and go down in the soil and it just holds that plant keeps that plant from you know from from wobbling too much in the wind that's what they're for that's what uh, that's what those roots are for and typically when you grow corn you're going to come through and you're going to heal that corn you're going to throw dirt onto uh, the corn stalk probably up to about right there even higher and those brace roots are really going to get entrenched into the soil and uh, really going to hold on much better this being a raised bed and since these raised beds are chock full uh, i can't come in here and heal them or throw dirt to them or bring dirt to them i was going to but i just there's not enough room uh, the tubs are pretty much full right now so to counteract the fact that I can't, I can't heal them and use those brace roots uh, to their full uh, potential, then I'm, uh, I'm definitely gonna have to tie these. Now, if you've got yours planted out in the ground and you've got them healed up and they're really healed high and you feel like there's really no danger, you may not have to do this, but it really doesn't take long. It's very cheap. Uh, I keep T-posts laying around anyway all the time and it's, uh, it's just insurance, you know, keep them from falling over. Here's what I did around the rebar, just wrapped around two or three times and went on my merry way down to the other end where the T-post is. But I hope this has helped you. I had somebody write the other day how to keep corn from falling over and I sent him an old video on that. But uh, this time I just decided to dead gum show you. So this is uh, how I do it. And it's worked real well, even though uh, in times past when I've done it, we've had some hard rains. And sometimes they will lean against each other. You have them stacked up like that. But since they're not blowing all the way over, they will typically stand back straight as an arrow. Because I don't want but ugly corn falling over. I want to show you some pretty corn standing here. And it won't be long. I would say 30 days maybe, something like that. And uh, we're going to have us a... Uh, Hopefully, a big, big harvest of ambrosia sweet corn. All right, hope that helps you, 
And I think we're done on this little project. And we're gone.